Good evening. I welcome you with great love in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on our Saturday night service of our church, which is at the moment, unfortunately, only on online, but we are happy that it happens and we are happy that you are there before various devices. And please be prepared that uh, I would like to uh, preach the wor uh, word of God. And first of all, some announcements. Uh, you might know that uh, there is a pandemic and there are, uh, there are some restrictions ordered, curfew and others. Uh, therefore, we ask you to walk around with uh, cautiousness. If you go outside, please wear masks, keep uh, social distancing, uh, put great emphasis on washing your hands or disinfection, and, and don't go to such communities where it's not necessary. So outside of going to our, your workplaces, uh, please try to delay your programs. If you have symptoms, please don't go anywhere, no matter what kind of symptoms they might be and please see the doctor if it's needed. You can see uh, our various phone numbers on the screen. Um, uh, partially, uh, partially uh, the, the counseling service which is available between uh, 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 8 to uh, 20 hours and also crisis counseling is av available where um, we are waiting for uh, those who have acute problems and also our charity ministry uh, also tries to help wherever it's needed and we also have a general information um, phone number so you will see these numbers on a regular basis on the screen uh, the newest issue of hatak has been published uh, on the front page you can see a very sympathetic uh, lady Katalin Novak um, and you can find a very good uh, interview in this in this paper she says very important interesting things and many other topics are there the American elections are uh, is a hot topic still and also there is a new chapter of this uh, of um, of the pedophile uh, scandals within the Catholic Church and many other topics are available in Hetek. And also I'd like to call your attention to the subscription, uh, uh, Christmas sub subscription of Hetek. You can find the details in the paper if you sus subscribe to Hetek. Uh, then uh, you can have access to the online um, edition uh, and an, another, another uh, hatak uh, mask. Uh, it seems that uh, you will need it for for a time. And also, uh, 80 valuable uh, prizes will be drawn, and you can win a, a valuable car as well. So please use this opportunity. Other publications, books, and other publications can be purchased partially, uh, partly in Hitpark on work days between 11 to 4 p.m. Uh, Patmos shop is working, and also uh, there is a, 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 work, a shop, Patmos Cafe, uh, where you can take away uh, food and drink uh, there. You cannot sit there, uh, but um, but the bookstore part is open. So let me call your attention to some of our old and new books, uh, which are uh, strengthening of faith is very important. Kenneth Hagen's book, Biblical Faith, is very important. So if you don't have, uh, buy it. And another, maybe the freshest book, uh, uh, Jezebel's War Against America by Michael Brown. Uh, please buy it and read it because you will understand the world much more in the world where we live in and the one that is approaching and um, also our kindergarten program is going on uh, in which uh, we give publications uh, 
or exactly uh, children's Bible, uh, we, we uh, give them, and uh, one of its book is I Am, uh, you can buy this book uh, to your children, and also within the, the program we try to send it to, to the kindergartens. And also we have a novel, uh, this is one of the newest ones, uh, Oriana Code is the, the, the title of this, which is about the old new empires of Eastern Europe and about the challenges of, of Eastern Europe. It's a fictitious story, but uh, you can you can draw interesting conclusions of it. Uh, of it. But now I'd like to pray and start. Uh, uh, preaching of the word of God. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you called us out from this uh, oppressed and fallen state that Satan uh, tossed us into. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you didn't hate us, you didn't despise us, despite the fact that our ancestors rebelled against you. Um, uh, though you put uh, uh, Adam and Eve into Eden's garden in peace, uh, and welfare, and we deserve that uh, uh, we would uh, be punished, but you uh, sent your son Jesus Christ that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but have eternal life. And thank you, Lord, that whoever believes in him has passed from death to life. We are thankful to, to you, Lord, that we can have <coughs> service even though we cannot gather together because of the pandemic. pandemic. But thank you, Lord, uh, for those instruments, tools, and devices, and we bless them so that they would work and they would be suitable that uh, the anointing and breath of God would go to every home. Lord, please uh, visit those brothers and sisters of ours who are in trouble, who are in need, uh, whether they uh, lost their workplaces or because of other uh, reasons. And Lord, please visit all those who are in crisis, in critical uh, condition. Lord, visit my brothers and sisters that they would stand on their feet. They uh, feet, they would overcome the virus and all other uh, diseases. Lord, give us a breakthrough and victory by your grace and grant that uh, the people of God would be encouraged and would continue its life and actions. Lord, uh, protect our, um, our country so that um, alien interests wouldn't um, cause harm to our country. Uh, Lord, uh, break all those yokes that they want to put on us and grant, Lord, that Hungary would belong to the Christian culture even more, it could strengthen it and would be cleansed from bad traditions. Lord, turn our leaders towards yourself so that they would be open uh, to your gospel and, Lord, give them wisdom how to, um, how to manage Hungary in this hard time. And Lord, uh, keep us from the from uh, the, the pandemic and from the uh, possible economic crisis afterwards. And Lord, give your protection to us, uh, to America and, and to Europe and the whole world. Lord, set our set us free from the pandemic. And Lord, bless uh, the doctors, nurses, um, uh, those who the, the researchers, so that they could. Um, take care of the, the sick and uh, and vaccines would work and all other healing methods would, could work. Lord bless us and gra grant that the people of God could g gather together in great crowds and we would um, uh, remember of your deliverance. We give all the glory to you now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, welcome to those who joined us now and please open your Bibles at uh, Psalm 51, I'd like to read out this psalm right now, and on the, on the basis of that I'd like to speak about uh, the secret of the success of David. Obviously we cannot define that in one thing, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, one of uh, his most important uh, secrets is how he related to the Word of God. This was exceptional, and this led to uh, 
the uplifting of uh, David, and as a result, he became one of the heralds of the Messiah, and the Messiah was called and is called, even until today, son of David, and God promised to him, David, that uh, uh, from him, the, the, the Messiah will, will be born, and uh, even though he had uh, he, his position in his family, was not that noble. Sometimes he was rejected, it seems, uh, from the Word of God. But God lifted him up very much. So let me read a Psalm uh, 51, uh, which is uh, a Psalm of repent repentance. And it leads us into the darkest uh, hours of his life. And after that, he, he, he says this prayer and he puts it down. Uh, when he unfortunately committed adultery and betrayal against his friend, even more he made his, uh, uh, his, his friend killed. Uh, even though he wasn't a corrupt man or corrupt uh, politician or spiritual leader, but the secret of his success was that very honestly and uh, in a committed way he uh, took care of his relationship with God. And this is why he could come out of this uh, stumbling and it was very unexpected from him, for, for him and for those around him uh, that uh, within some moments he he, he fell down very deeply and he uh, himself was shocked and um, he tore his his heart very much and God restored him and, uh, and the psalm shows us its process and through this we can understand what was uh, his character beforehand as well. So, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba, uh, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, I have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time of my, time my brother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O oh God. Uh, you who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. Uh, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, you, God, will not despise. May it please you to, spro to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem, then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole, then bulls will be offered on your altar. Amen. So, in this psalm, David speaks uh, uh, testifies about, about a great brokenness. He uh, returns and turns to the Lord uh, like that, and he's able to do that because earlier he had a very quality relationship with the Lord, as it happens many times that uh, you, uh, you had some values when you lose it, but David wasn't among then he knew it very well how important the uh, relationship with the, Lord, with the Lord is for him. 
and he took care of this relationship in a quality manner, and um, therefore the Lord uh, tells us a very interesting thing, even when we do not, do not know that he says this about him. Uh, so before David, it was Saul who was king in Israel, and when uh, God takes uh, his grace away from, from Saul, and he says that uh, he no longer can be a uh, uh, king, he says, that's a very important uh, thing in, uh, in First Samuel, he says that now your kingdom will not uh, be uh, will not stand. And about David, he says that God sought uh, a man after his own heart, uh, whom he ordered above his people, because you do not keep, didn't keep what the Lord commanded to you. So what can be a man after God's heart can be? Uh, who is not only a person who comes close to God and, and God is close to our heart because this is God's work of grace and he does so not because of our merits because uh, he came close to such people like Simon the Magicians or, uh, or other apostate Christians, not to mention Judas and, and many others. Uh, so God comes close to people, he is close to the human heart. It's the manifestation of God's grace. But what can be the, the person who can come close to God's heart? So about David, uh, the prophet Samuel says that God is looking for such a person and he found him in David who can come close to God's heart. So a man after God's heart, we shouldn't mean it sentimentally. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, on a basis of some sentimental or emotional basis, uh, uh, David became uh, uh, a favorite one uh, to God. Uh, Saul was also elected, but but he didn't come close to God's heart, so he he didn't become a man after God's heart. Uh, but David reacted to this closing of God uh, by by trying to get closer to God's heart, and he tried to invest in that, and this is why his repentance that we read about in this psalm was successful. Uh, even uh, before that and after this psalm or, or this event, he could stay close to God's heart and God didn't treat him according to his uh, sins. And the same is true for us because uh, I myself also had uh, similar sins like, like David or even worse uh, and many others uh, can be like that. Uh, we didn't live a, a holy life but we lived in sins but just and just like prophet isaiah says that they the sins um, separated us from god and the fact that god visited us is a great opportunity and how what should we use this opportunity to get close to god and when we get close to god then he can he can bring us out of these uh, deepest moments we cannot we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't commit adultery or murder, but uh, David was able to stand up from this. Uh, why? Because communion with the Lord was important. It wasn't only important what he could get from God, what he could take out from this relationship, but relationship itself was important for him. So David related to God as a person, and his heart, David's heart, and God's heart uh, were able to communicate with each other. So the secret uh, of the success of David, one of the most important ones, we could mention many others uh, as well, but I'd like to speak about that right now, that David uh, was a spirit-centered person who paid attention to his own heart, who always uh, tried to, to search out what's from the Lord and what was the relationship between his heart and God's heart. Uh, concerning that, uh, I'd like to uh, read some verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, which uh, refers to similar relationship. The, the Apostle Paul had such a relationship, and we cannot even, we don't even know uh, if there was any failure in his heart after his repentance. And this is what we wish to each other, that we could live a life without any failure after our repentance, but if uh, there is any other 
uh, any um, failure morally or other ways. Um, we pray that God would help us. Uh, 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 Paul was stoned and, and maybe he, he died also, but uh, his spirit returned to him. So from such events and hardships, uh, God co uh, brought him out. And you and I will be brought out from every situation, uh, especially if we try to become people after God's heart. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says that whoever it, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to, to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spiritual words. So, the Apostle Paul speaks about his own secret, uh, but indeed David has the same secret that these people learned uh, that uh, there are there are three uh, from among the three parts of man, uh, spirit, soul, and body. The spirit should be dominant, and they uh, learned how to pay attention to the spirit, and and they put great emphasis on communication between the human spirit and the spirit of God. Both David and the Apostle Paul. Uh, so such kind of communication lifts you up. Uh, from from the crowd, from from the average people, uh, because such a person is directed towards God. Uh, such a person is drawn into God's presence and he draws such people uh, into his work. And it, it, uh, all of us uh, fade and all of us are sinners, just like David says that even uh, in the womb we were sinners when we couldn't do any good or bad, but uh, <coughs> the original, because of the original sin, everyone is far from God, but when God visits us, and when he gives life into our hearts and souls, uh, it's such a, such a chance that we have to make use of, and we have uh, received this uh, chance uh, not to live uh, the same life uh, that we lived before. Uh, but we, for example, if uh, if if a criminal is set free, uh, it's not included that he has to he has to change. Uh, he is given grace uh, by the president or someone. He might continue uh, committing bank robbery or other sins. Uh, and obviously, then in this case, he didn't use this grace uh, well. Uh, but God expects that. Uh, uh, but it's uh, of course it's it's grace uh, that obliges us uh, that we wouldn't continue with that life that we have lived so far or until then uh, and it's not just the, the lifestyle but but our whole life should be lived like that so David didn't use this grace uh, that we received from God to become a better shepherd uh, but he understood that uh, God's had God has a plan in his life. Of course, uh, God's plan can, can be uh, in your life that uh, you be a, a good shepherd. Uh, I don't consider it bad. But in David's life, it wasn't God's plan. But he was looking for such a person whom he could uh, make a king. And uh, all, uh, finally, for all of us, the time will come when we have to leave our natural profession behind and we will stand in reigning with God in the next world era. So for all of us, the final goal is the kingdom. So we are a royal priesthood, a chosen people uh, to be saved. So uh, God's attraction uh, to our hearts starts and uh, whoever 
uh, wants to put uh, his spirit, his heart into God's presence and is looking for the Lord uh, deliberately, then the Spirit of God will reveal such things that we cannot know with our uh, natural uh, abilities. And in this case, you will have a supernatural life, uh, a life uh, anointed and, and blessed by God. And we will receive such things that God has given us uh, uh, free of charge, not according to our efforts or performances, uh, but simply we just make the channel between the human heart and, and God's uh, spirit. If our spirit gets into uh, the presence of God, uh, where simply two things might happen, that since our spirit knows about everything, or knows everything about us, uh, it, it knows about our uh, fallibility. Uh, we receive um, an encouragement in the presence of God how to come out of them so that we could change. So the, the man who has uh, a very quality uh, spiritual life receives um, um, uh, from God uh, uh, that, that we would be, we would try to change, and the other is that uh, the goals uh, set by God is received by our spirits, and we try, we start to tune on the task uh, that God has uh, appointed to us. Uh, maybe uh, step by step, or sometimes uh, you receive the long-term goal, just like in case of the Apostle Paul, after his repentance, the Lord told him that he would lead him among the nations, he will uh, uh, lead, lead him to such a lifestyle that he, he haven't expected. So this is how the Spirit of God and uh, the communication between the Spirit of God and the Spirit of man works. And about uh, the Spirit of God, the Apostle Paul says that he searches the deep, deep things of God. So it includes that uh, the Holy Spirit can tell us such things which are which is a secret. So he can tell us things which are secret, but he uh, gives uh, us uh, very confidential information, very confidential thoughts, and uh, it is very important that you take care of what the Lord trusts you with and trusts you with. So what I really want you to see is that it's a very special relationship between the heart of man and between the Spirit of God. This is something that we have to put great emphasis on because David is set before us as an example and a role model, uh, and it is a, 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 a common um, a custom them among Christians to give the name David to their children, uh, and it's a good good uh, custom among Christians, you should do that, but you know, the real example that he set lies in the fact that he was um, successful uh, in his faith, and just as Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, uh, according to the Gospels, uh, he says to her that uh, God searches for the people who love him in spirit and in truth. So God accepted those forms of uh, worship which was practiced by the sons of Israel uh, during the time of the law or under the law. These were um, physical, um, uh, historical forms of worship they had value spiritual and moral value but they were just preparation they they foreshadowed what is to come and in jesus christ's sacrifice he fulfilled all of these um, types so it is not by coincidence that uh, um, David says in Psalm uh, 51 that uh, the, the, the greatest um, um, sacrifice before God is not the shedding of blood, not the killing of animals. And David understood it because he, he had a, a personal relationship with the Holy, Holy Spirit. It, it sounds as if the Holy Spirit was whispering to him and, and told him in advance, look, all this is going to change because there would come a time when people would be able to worship God with their hearts, with their spirits. And I, I thought, I think maybe David was thinking that 
Couldn't I be a person who would belong among these, you know, belong to that era? And maybe the Holy Spirit said to him, yes, he can be one of them. So I think this is what David's secret was, really, and what we can find in the Gospel of John, the fact that God uh, searches for people who worship him in spirit and in truth, um, is welcomed by God. It, it means, it also means that not every person who worships God worships him in spirit and in truth and and in the first place not only uh, not every person seeks him in the first place so I want to encourage you to be a person who worships him in, in spirit and in truth and you can approach God with uh, with our human capacities but the, the relationship is real when we learn to speak his language and when we, you know, when we put the emphasis on us, that we want God to understand us, he will not, he may not tell us the most important things that he wants to tell us, but what we need, the simple things. But, you know, with all these things which cannot be uh, taken hold of, cannot be perceived by the human skills and capacities, it is only the Holy Spirit that can bring it into a person's life. This is what the prophet Jeremiah also also talked about that the New Testament uh, will not be would not be as the covenant made with the sons of Israel. The law will be written in human humans' hearts, in in the spirits of man. So there will be no need. Uh, for uh, for spiritual persons who have a real relationship with God, you know, be a mediator between God and man to sort of trans, uh, transfer the message to them, but man will have an opportunity uh, that everybody has a relationship with God. It, Jesus says in John chapter 6, uh, 45, verse 45. It is written in the prophets, they will all be told by God, everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. So, the fact that we can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ throughout all our lives, uh, and not just an official one, you know, having been registered in heaven and so on. But this is, you know, the, for this, this real relationship, you need to have a prerequisite. It is that you hear from God personally that uh, you are told by God, that your spirit is touched by God, is drawn by God, it is energized by God, and uh, that it is done in a way that between the human spirit and God's spirit, uh, there is relationship created in the first letter of John, in chapter 2, verses 20 and 27, John also speaks about and elaborates uh, on this thought, and I'm reading this uh, uh, to you. But you have anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. And verse 27, as for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you all about all things, and as is that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you remain in him. You know, the spirit has a voice, human souls have a voice, demons have a voice, the body has a voice, other people have voices, and the spirit of this world uh, is a great rival of uh, the spirit of the Holy Spirit's voice. Um, and I would like to encourage you to, to, to learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Lord's voice through him. And if you can do that, then we are on the way that David has also started off on. And this is where we have to still develop. And this is where we have to uh, go on. I would like to turn back to Psalm 51. Let's go back there. So this is a psalm of repentance. Now, 
God uh, made David uh, face his own sins through the prophet Nathan. I won't uh, tell you that story for you. Uh, and first of all, David wants to, you know, uh, neglect um, uh, this um, um, this calling into account. Uh, he he thought he sorted out, you know, all the all the traces. He thought that uh, he. He committed the perfect crime, but God saw it all, and it, he didn't like it. Uh, he sent prof the prophet Nathan and uh, uh, to talk to him, and he made him uh, realize that instead of blaming others, he should own up to his sin, because first he um, sh uh, spoke to him in a parable. He taught him of a story uh, about a person who who misused his authority and, and stole a lamb from another person. And um, David, when he gave his verdict, uh, wasn't true. He wasn't fair, because this kind of a sin that was presented in this uh, story wouldn't have uh, couldn't have been uh, punished with death. And this is how he tried to ease his own uh, or, or relieve his own bad conscience. But when Nathan uh, faced him and spoke to him about the fact that uh, he was that son of death uh, that deserved that, and this is a very interesting part and exciting part, I would like to read it up again from verse 7. But this is the first impression that God, uh, that David had uh, about sin. And you see that uh, this uh, 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 psalm doesn't contain the proper, you know, confession of sin, as we would call it today, that he didn't say, well, I cheated um, uh, with uh, with a seduced uh, Bathsheba's uh, Bathsheba Uriah's wi wife. Uh, then I killed uh, her husband. Then I lied to everybody about it. Then I I called her to myself, and I I, I try to uh, make all the traces of the sin disappear. Um, um, and you know it, he doesn't confess his sins as such but uh, the Holy Spirit uh, so it all happened very quickly but before that he was venting you know um, he was uh, uh, denying his sin but you know the re uh, revelation comes uh, like that uh, suddenly the light goes off the light goes on and you can see the the uh, the connections uh, behind uh, the actions. Surely, from verse 5, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desire faithfulness even in the womb. You told me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. So, uh, David um, was thinking about, uh, you know, how could this happen to me? It wasn't typical of me. How could this happened to me and he understand immediately he understood immediately that he inherited sinful uh, inclinations from his ancestors uh, the the so-called old man uh, his his background uh, got energized and gained momentum and um, well the phases of this is written down in the Bible but David really uh, uh, immediately got a glimpse of what had happened um, uh, and he realized that he was neglecting the, his relationship with uh, with God and all this, you know, the success and everything that, uh, you know, the sense of uh, security uh, um, caused um, David's uh, relationship with God fade away. And we, we don't know, you know, where he made mistakes. We don't know where he missed out on, you know, what activities he might have missed out on. The Bible is quite secretive about this. But David knew what it was. 
and um, he knew that uh, this sin uh, uh, really attacked him in a way uh, uh, he knew the reason for that if you if you look at his um, if you look at his family tree uh, his um, his uh, father, uh, this great 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 grandfather Judah, uh, his fir first ancestor went to a, a prostitute. Uh, he, she wasn't a prostitute, but it was uh, his uh, daughter-in-law, in fact, and one of um, uh, the the uh, mothers, the great great grandmothers that he had had uh, was Rahab, a real prostitute. So that was a spiritual background that was uh, looming over David and his family, and he, he, for a long time he didn't have any problems. But when his spiritual life became weaker, then this uh, the sinful background suddenly attacked him. The, the background that he thought that he he have ha, had no problems with it with with anymore so that is a very there is a lesson to learn for us brothers and sisters so if we let our relationship with god uh, you know um, um, be neglected uh, then then the same can happen to us where for more than half a year we don't have we haven't had the kind of services that uh, we have been able to go to um, you know uh, it is maybe just now that we realize what they meant for us when we have when we had these uh, uh, services and now there are you know online services and everything but uh, uh, you know the fact that uh, the, the real um, service is uh, is in the background now it is a chance for the devil to weaken the spiritual life of, of Christians you know your prayer life gets slower your vision gets blurred and so on and i don't say that the devil uh, comes and gets at you immediately but there is a chance for him to attack you you know and david was a spiritual man he had for decades he had a very uh, quality relationship with god and uh, he knew what the problem was immediately uh, you see, uh, he even when he realized that this situation, what had happened, he knew immediately how he should turn the situation. Uh, he knew how to turn it around immediately, and he didn't uh, ruminate on uh, on what had happened and uh, bang his hand against the wall, uh, uh, being sorry for everything. He knew what to do exactly and how to turn the situation around. Let's look at uh, verses 12 and 13. Um, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will see transgressors your way, so that sinners will turn back to you. So God, um, he, he asks God to, he realizes something had happened in his heart. He asks God to, to uh, restore him. He asked here in verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So uh, he asked for a strong uh, spirit, uh, um, a strong, um, an established spirit from God. Uh, this is a spirit that has a uh, uh, full and uh, um, quality contact with the God's spirit. So this is what he asked for because he realized what happened. David knew that he 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 uh, lost a kind of anointing, and in my view, it didn't happen with the actual acts of sin, but it had happened previously. Um, the, that that was ritually a heart that was ritually uh, clean before God. He had lost it. So this is the kind of the exact description that the scripture uses here. So this heart that is acceptable, that was acceptable 
possible for God, that is what was lost. The man, the, his st state of, of man being after God's own heart, uh, uh, that was lost. Uh, you know, we are going ahead, we are successful, uh, and uh, we are just shooting ahead. Uh, you know, and the anointing was on him, and and did the um, did everything uh, according to God's plan. You know, all the source of this is the inner heart of man, and we can see this in uh, the prophet Ezekiel. Um, and um, uh, we can see it uh, with this um, in this book. The third. Chapter 36, verses, uh, uh, verse 26. Um, probably this was a, what is described here was um, an encounter that David might have had uh, with God, an experience that uh, uh, David might have had, must have had with God. Uh, and um, and it is described here so this is ver uh, verse 26 in chapter 36 says that uh, it, it, it talks about this state I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And in, uh, in Psalm 51, he says in verse uh, 13 that God, he asked God not to remove from him um, the anointing and his Holy Spirit and God's Holy Spirit. So he had felt this deterioration in his heart. And uh, um, we mentioned that in Ezekiel, he said, Ezekiel said that I will give my spirit into your hearts. And um, and um, um, I will make you walk in my ways. So David knew that this relationship, his condition, his previous condition had deteriorated. And this, this Holy Spirit, that was a comfort, that was a, a, um, a comforter um, uh, who is all this for us now, and he had lost it. And it is it's such a great uh, experience when we um, experience the Holy Spirit. Um, and um, when he wants to speak to us, and when he speaks to us through our hearts, through our spirits, because the, the God uh, searches for um, um, worshippers who worship him with their hearts in truth and in spirit, and not only through rituals or religious practices. So the Holy Spirit's personal uh, guidance can only work in our lives if you have the the capacity in in yourself to be able to uh, follow the holy spirit so the holy spirit can um, restore and care can surround our our life through our spirits going back to psalm 51 immediately after david uh, asked for the in, the restoration of the inner anointing and asked uh, for the outside anointing uh, uh, to be restored on him to carry out tasks as a king, uh, he, he immediately asked for um, the, the, the joy of the Holy Spirit. You know, God, David knew that uh, the Holy Spirit was on him, but he wasn't happy anymore over his condition, and that was due, according to his fall, into sin. The Holy Spirit is on us, even if he cannot rejoice in 
what we are like. Uh, in a certain sense, the Holy Spirit was on us when we were sinners. Otherwise, we would, wouldn't have been able to, to repent. And it's very embarrassing uh, to think it over uh, what kind of uh, situations we had in, in drunkenness uh, during fornication. The Holy Spirit was there with us. And what would have, uh, what could have he uh, thought? Uh, and he, he would have thought that if we didn't repent uh, at a certain time, until a certain time, I, I, I will not endure that. But thank God the Lord gave, gave us grace that we could repent. And the Lord was, was with us in the strangest uh, situations. And the Lord will not leave us if you didn't pray for, for time. Uh, he didn't leave you. He will, will not leave you if you didn't read the Bible for a time, if you watched uh, ugly things on the internet. Of course, if you do such things for a long time, the Lord will leave you. But He's faithful. Um, he remains in you, but He's not happy in you. And if the Holy Spirit is not happy in you, then you can not be happy as well either. Uh, at most, you you just try to uh, to create the illusion of joy, and this is why you go into sin because you are looking for something by which you compensate yourself. Uh, you try to make yourself happy, but if you uh, if you live uh, the joy of the Lord, then you would need any comp compensation. But for this, you need to appreciate the inner anointing. So if the Holy Spirit can rejoice in you, your heart uh, experiences this joy as well. Um, and David uh, realized that the Holy Spirit was on him, but for a long time he didn't rejoice. This is why I fall into de depression. This is why I lost the meaning of my life. This is why I fell into sin. And this is why in the second part uh, of uh, verse 12, uh, grant me a willing spirit uh, so that uh, that, uh, that the Lord would uh, realize obedience in him, the readiness uh, to, to act freely, and those passions uh, that, that uh, show uh, the likeness of God. So, uh, so, so David desired such a spirit that he had, which is ready to do good towards man, and to, to serve God, so the readiness uh, for the ministry is it indeed. So, in verse uh, uh, 13, the verse says, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. And the, the, the next, uh, I would like to rejoice in your presence. I will sing to the Lord, uh, sing of your righteousness. And then verse 15, I, I would like to serve the Lord with my uh, praise. And then, uh, this noble spirit draws his attention to the fact that he has a, a mission. It's not that you would drink and eat and you would live safely, but God has a plan in your life and in David's life, the most important uh, a goal was to occupy the city of Jerusalem and to restore it and the renewal of the, the service. And then David realizes uh, his task. Verse uh, 18, may it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem, that you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole, then bulls will be offered on your altar. So you and I also have a mission from God. It's uh, it's for us. We we don't need to build uh, the city of Jerusalem. Uh, we have other tasks, some common goals, uh, worshiping and praising God, and testifying about the Lord, and giving and other uh, other mission tasks. But we have so, such special ones according to God's appointment, and this is what it what what this ready spirit means. This noble spirit means that you don't want to live a selfish life, but you are looking for the com communion with the Lord. Let me just say some words about that uh, David, 
Behind David's uh, behavior that we spoke about so far, there is a very important element, uh, which means the smart behavior that uh, the Bible uh, speaks about. For example, uh, in 1 Samuel uh, 18, 5, uh, whatever mission so sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. So it's not a, a, a special condition of his intellectual skills. Um, so this this part of scripture does not uh, apply to this, but it's a kind of uh, relationship or behavior when you you look with your eyes with, with your heart and you put the divine guidance as the basis of all your decisions indeed uh, uh, with the new Testament terms, we say that uh, he is walking in, in the guidance of the Lord. And in the very beginning of the Bible, uh, when Eve is tested and the, and the snake shows uh, the, the, the fruit that God uh, forbid her, and, uh, and, the, and the word says that the snake was smart, and, uh, and this is what Eve desired that uh, she would be smart. It's not a problem that she wanted to be smart. Uh, it wasn't good that he, she didn't want it uh, from God, but from, from the snake. So uh, all of us might fall into the same problem that we want to, uh, to get the guidance of the Holy Spirit uh, through natural experiences. Still, the Holy Spirit is a real person and it's him who wants to give us the spiritual vision. So then uh, we wouldn't strive for personal gain. Uh, the same uh, word can be translated to craftiness, uh, uh, smartness. Uh, so it means that, uh, that someone uses uh, what he received from God uh, for his own good. It's, it's not forbidden. But first of all, we have to look for God's righteousness. For for example, the same Hebrew word is used by David in other psalms. Uh, for example, in Psalm 53, that God looks down uh, from heaven to uh, on all mankind to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. So this understanding is given for seeking God. Or for example, in Psalm 101, um, I, I will be careful to lead a blameless life, when will you come to me? Uh, this word careful means that I would I want to tune my uh, understanding on the ways of life because I want to seek God, I want to touch God's heart, and I want to create uh, and maintain a relationship between God's heart and my, my heart. This was one of the most important fruits of, God's, of David's spiritual life, that he was always looking for God and ask what should we do, even if it was very obvious what to do. For example, he and his people and his uh, and uh, his the, the, their possessions were taken away by the enemy, and it was obvious that uh, he had to get it back. And, and then he asked the Lord, "What should we do?" And the Lord replied, "Go and and uh, you will get back everything." And uh, the, and David thought that it was uh, God's um, grace that they, he could get them back. Now, uh, very briefly, uh, David always appreciated the anointing, not only that was on him, but on uh, that was on others. For example, when Saul was rejected that uh, he wouldn't be a king, 
He always calls him the anointed one of God. Two times uh, God has given him in, uh, into his hand, but he said, I won't raise my hand against the anointed one of God. And then when the uh, uh, Amalekite man comes and said that uh, I was the one who killed uh, Saul, and then uh, then David said that you, it's your blood is on your own head because you said that you, you killed the anointed one of God. So we have to appreciate uh, the the anointing that's on, on others' life. So we, we wouldn't live like wild um, uh, swines, uh, but we have to appreciate others who have anointing, even if they have less or greater. Uh, but we have to see the work of God in them. Another important thing is that David uh, brought the Ark of the Covenant to Zion, uh, so in restoring the worship of God, he didn't neglect his mission. Um, First Chronicles 13.3 uh, says, hogy bár a frigyláda ott volt már, a filiszteusoktól októl visszajött, ott volt már kirját járja. Uh, let us bring the ark of your, uh, our God back to us, uh, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. So in the time of Saul, it was in Kiriat Jerum, but he didn't care about that. Uh, he was satisfied that uh, according to certain forms in the law, uh, they showed uh, the sacrifices and he prayed uh, to the Lord, but uh, Saul was interested in what uh, the Lord says, but David was interested in what the Lord says, and there is a very interesting thing in 1 Samuel 14, chapter 14, verse 18, when uh, they are against the Philistines, and then so said to Ahia, Ahija, uh, bring the ark of God. At that time, it was with the Israelites, and then so so realized that he has to bring uh, the communion with the Lord on a higher level. Of course. Uh, uh, so while Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the Philistine camp increased more and more, so it seemed that they would attack. So Saul said to the priest, withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all his men assembled and went to the battle. So Saul thought that if I had time uh, for the Ark of the Covenant, it, it would be a good idea. Uh, if I had time to pray, to read the Bible, to restore the personal relationship with the Lord, it would be fine. But a phone comes or some unexpected event comes, let's leave it, then uh, we will do it at another time. And sometimes this another time will not come uh, unless you make a radical decision. So so, uh, uh, apart from Saul's so, uh, neglected uh, behavior, uh, David uh, brought the Ark of the Covenant to, to Jerusalem. And the other thing is that uh, David uh, uh, took a whisper from the Holy Spirit that God wants to build a temple. Until then, uh, 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 no one spoke about that, but in Second Samuel chapter 7, it's written that uh, the Lord raises an intimate, intimate question to David in verse 5. Uh, are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? How did the Lord know that? Of course, uh, he knew it from uh, the Holy Spirit's omniscience, that, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit whispered to David, and, and David was so enthusiastic that he says that, uh, I want to do it, and, and the Lord asked, is it really in your heart? And David said, yes, it's in my heart, and then the Lord replied that it's very good, but it's not you who will do it. Verse 12. Uh, when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring uh, to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. So indeed, when God can see this desire in David's heart that he would like to build the temple for him, then he says that the, uh, the Messiah will uh, derive from 
uh, David. And why was it in, in David's heart? Because he had such a communion uh, with, with the Holy Spirit that he understood what didn't even uh, refer to him. So first of all, he tr he started to collect the wealth uh, for the uh, for building of the temple, and then he also asked for the heavenly plan of the temple, similarly to Moses, that he took the the plan of the holy tab tabernacle from the Lord. Uh, we can read it in uh, First Chronicles. Uh, 12, uh, uh, 28, verse 12. He gave him the plans of all that the Spirit had put in his mind for the course of the temple of the Lord and all the surrounding rooms for the treasuries, and so, etc. What is the point is here that uh, that uh, that the spirit, maybe his spirit or the Holy Spirit, is difficult to decide, uh, but it the plan uh, uh, appeared in his spirit, and at the same place in verse 19, all of this David said, I have in writing as a result of the Lord's hand on me, and He enabled me to understand all the details of the plan. It's very interesting that he enabled me to understand. It's the same uh, word as uh, expression, uh, what is translated as smartness or craftiness uh, uh, at other places. So he saw uh, the life of Solomon in advance and also the mission of the Messiah and this spiritual vision uh, was used uh, to collect the, the treasures uh, for the for the building up of Solomon's temple, and then Solomon was able to realize that. I would like to close it down with the with these words that the new birth and the baptism uh, with the Holy Spirit made us uh, such people, uh, such smart and crafty people, and let's appreciate that we have anointing in our inner man and on, on our actions, and we can have a personal relationship with the Lord, and we have a mission. And no matter what situation uh, we we might be in, uh, it will bring us out uh, from the them, and the Lord grants us that we would walk on our high places. May the Lord bless you. Uh, we will continue our uh, service. Uh, please welcome Istvan Mészáros. Tisztelettel és szeretettel köszöntelek én is benneteket, kedves testvérek, és külön köszöntöm a kedves nézőket. Welcome with respect and love, dear brothers and sisters, and I especially welcome those viewers who might join us uh, for the first time to such an online service. Uh, now I'd like to read out the part of uh, a psalm that the Holy Spirit gave through King David, and with this I'd like to strengthen your heart. The human heart is the center of the human uh, personality, it's, it's linked with the Holy Spirit, and that part, it's that part of our personality that is able to join God. If it's in a good condition, it's released from under sin, and, and cares and troubles does not uh, rule over it, uh, then it can communicate with God and it could receive uh, the heavenly um, broadcast and uh, we can see into the invisible with, with our hearts. So the heart is the center of our personality. It's not by coincidence that the, the book of Proverbs uh, draws our attention that we should guard our hearts with all diligence from out of our heart all life springs out. Uh, so through the heart the divine life comes into us and 
is is spreading to our hearts uh, to our souls and bodies so it's hard that is the link between god so at all, all times we have to strengthen our hearts especially in such hard time and in, in general in hard times uh, and right now uh, the destruction of the coronavirus pandemic um, and and the waves of the the mass migrations and and the gay active all these uh, come together and they turn the everyday life upside down so at such time at such a time it's very important to take power and get power from God and just like Chaba spoke about that the secret of David King David was that he was the man of the spirit he was spirit centered uh, he realized that how important the, pres the presence of God is for his heart and when he committed uh, this his sin for him it was important uh, for him to be purified in his heart and to be strengthened by God's spirit let's see Psalm uh, 16 uh, from verse 8 let's see the word of God by which I'd like to strengthen your heart so it's the Psalm of David I keep my eyes always on the Lord with him at my right hand I will not be shaken therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices my body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead nor will you let your faithful one see decay you make known to me the path of life you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pressures at your right hand amen so uh, this is a messianic um, psalm it was born uh, by uh, looking at uh, at, uh, at, uh, at uh, the vision about the Messiah and the first thing I'd like to call your attention uh, from verse 8 is that it, it starts with that I keep my eyes always on the Lord so I keep my eyes always on the Lord this is what the psalm says looking at the, at the Lord looking at God is the basis of everything it's the key for everything the, the law of vision uh, is very important even in normal life everyone starts to be like what he looks at what he thinks about what he recognizes even his personality can be controlled by that it's in the word that uh, people look at uh, their stars what they consider their their stars they they start to clothe like him to, to wear their hairs like that and follow their uh, lifestyle or if someone looks at uh, watches uh, a movie uh, he will become happy and, uh, and he will go to bed in, in a different way uh, or if a fan watches a football game and uh, he he watches his own team uh, uh, having their their actions he, he might get, uh, even fall into ecstasy so these natural things will not change your life however it can be shown on the basis of the law of uh, vision that they they influence uh, the human personality but dear viewers this is God's vision God's vision can bring about a remaining change in the personality of man uh, our whole personality can be um, in, uh, affected and our whole personality can be transformed just a glimpse of God's presence uh, just a glimpse of his glory and of his power and then 
this one, this person uh, will be filled with new life. Uh, he will be filled with a new life and he will become a completely different man by the glimpse of God's glory. And, and this conveys the presence of God. And whoever has this vision will be, will be uh, emboldened, encouraged. It's, he is be filled with life and the ice will melt off his heart when, when the presence of God uh, touches him or his presence wrapps him um, and then then you just realize that you are full of electrici electricity and you are you just uh, jump out of your skin you are filled with hope you are filled with faith and burdens fall off your heart and soul you just uh, become bold and you you just uh, you are just filled with strength uh, you you start to walk and start to run if you if you were lying and even the sick say that I'm I'm bold and, and I'm a hero uh, such as the glimpse of God's presence and may God grant more and more of such glimpses uh, it's the Holy Spirit who takes hold on your heart and as a eye curing um, medicine uh, it takes off the veil from your eyes and the invisible will be opened up before you and you will see with your inner man that it's Jesus Christ who is the Savior, the Redeemer and the Healer who sits in the, on the heavenly throne as a King of Kings and in his hands uh, there are the keys of uh, hell and Hades and with his glowing bronze feet uh, uh, which he trampled on the head of the serpent and he puts evil uh, keeps evil under his feet and with his helping right hand which is stretched out right now and is and is ready to help you out uh, uh, from you from the waves just like Peter was uh, taken out when he was walking on the stormy sea and he started to sink because he, he looked that um, uh, the environment around him uh, but at the moment when he looked at Jesus Christ in that moment the outstretched arm of Jesus lifted uh, Peter up from among the waves which could have become his his grave without him I, I speak about that because um, it's God's vision that can change you, and, uh, and you just realize that the crown is on the head of Jesus Christ, uh, who is the King of Kings. This is the crown that, that uh, shows that he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and with, he, with which he will return to put everything in order uh, on earth, and he will uh, realize radical political change and he will uh, replace the, the system of death uh, to system of eternal life so there is a sense to fight and when you realize that uh, Jesus Christ uh, just to use this sports terminology uh, if you uh, realize that Jesus Christ is the captain of the soccer team uh, who put on the human form for all mankind. He put on uh, your, our clothes so that uh, whatever we spoiled, uh, he would he would restore it and he would lead us back into God's presence. When you realize that, uh, that how irresistible action uh, did Jesus take uh, against the enemy of Satan, uh, against curses, against sin, how he scored a goal uh, that, that, uh, that made a hole in the net of the enemy, and how he rose up from the dead, how he returned uh, from where no one returned. So this touches you, this will turn you outside of your old self, 
it will turn you out uh, from from grieving, from sadness and sorrow, and in place of sorrow, uh, there will be joy. If you have such kind of a flash, you, immediately you look at yourself, you look at your environment, you look at your circumstances, so you, you look at your future in a very different way. So that's why it is very important to uh, cling to God, to hold on to Him, to look up to Him, uh, and to lift your eyes uh, above your circumstances and to Him. So, you know, that is why the first and most important thing is to look up to God. So, uh, the result basically of your turning to God and you're looking up to Him is uh, the very fact that I started to talk about that if you want, if you start to draw near to him he also draw, draws near to you and he allows you to see him he uh, puts a healing um, uh, ointment on your eyes so that you will be able to see him and see the invisible you know the invisible doesn't mean that it's something that doesn't exist it, it only means that you cannot uh, take hold of it in an empiric in in an empiric way and with our senses because it's invisible but it still exists uh, you know the word of God says that everything that is visible has come from the invisible the newborn heart um, which has, has lost the, the veils of sin and death you know this clean heart that has been uh, uh, delivered from this 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 veil um, with that you can see the invisible this is the new heart that is created within you when you are born again through Jesus Christ and uh, you know the Holy Spirit comes along you as well and communicates with your new heart and there is a way of communication between the two of you uh, you know between your heart and the Holy Spirit so the next thing that I would like to talk about is you know vision so what did he what did Dave it see here he says that he continually looked at the Lord because he's at my right hand he said so uh, man sees that God is not against man but for him he is right by his side at his right hand he's there as his most faithful um, um, ally and he's Emmanuel which means uh, God is with us so this is the very reason that Jesus Christ came from so far away from the heaven to stand by our side to to take us to snatch us out of the uh, the pits of destruction and take us back to the relationship with uh, with the Father with the Living God to our real heavenly home to make a place for us there but now on this very earth he wants he also wants to make us victors and until we reach our final goal if you see Jesus the Messiah that he's by your side that he's at your right hand you understand that while wow, he's here and he suffered for you he died for you he went down to hell for you and for you to be made righteous he did all this he suffered instead of you for your sins and he was raised uh, to make us righteous and to to get us uh, reach our final goal and get us uh, arrive at our destination and you you see when you see that he's there in the most uh, pr prominent place of the universe he himself Jesus sits at the right hand of the father he sits on his throne and he's got power and he, he's got glory and he's got the skills to uh, and the authority to mobilize all heaven and the Holy Spirit for you and through the Holy Spirit he would also he, he is also able to break all those powers that want to bind you or have bound you or want to take you to bondage so glory to God it is a very important thing that you become a covenant partner of God that we have become covenant partners with God because he has made a covenant with us in Jesus Christ it is so 
um, delightful to understand that there are so many visions, so many um, 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 scriptures in the Bible that talk about men of God who have been who have been raptured or in a rapture, and they have an insight into the kingdom of God that they and they see the the uh, they see the signs of uh, of um, of this covenant, and it is, for example, one example for this is in Revelations chapter four, verse one. Let me read it. Uh, after this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said come up here and i will show you what you must take what must pl take place after this at once i was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it and the throne and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby a rainbow that shone like an emerald and cycled the throne. So this is what, amen, this is what uh, John the Apostle saw be, uh, before he before he would be taken to heaven. And, uh, you know, he, he saw uh, what would be, uh, what, what is there behind this apocalyptic time. He saw that there was, a, you know, this beautiful, beautiful throne that you know there was the rainbow which uh, which was given by God you know a covenant sign uh, given to Noah by God at the time of the um, the, the flood you, you see that in the greatest center of authority and power at the very dwelling place of uh, God you know the the sign of covenant is there with God this is a sign that causes us to remember that whatever kind of apocalypse we are we will have uh, in the future God had made a covenant with us he has made a covenant with us and it's important that he will help us for example if you are tossed around in the middle of the sea in a in a, in a little boat and and, and you think uh, there's a massive uh, uh, a ship that comes towards you uh, and you think that, oh, this is, uh, th th I'm not going to survive this. But when you see your flag on that massive ship, when you see the, the flag of your country where you belong on that ship, you know, you see the, the or you see the flag of a country with which country your country is in a covenant. So won't you, wouldn't you be happy to see that? And wouldn't you be, you know, wouldn't you be uh, overjoyed to, to, to see that uh, in that situation? Ezekiel saw the, the same kind of thing, you know, uh, in the Old Testament uh, uh, and in, the, in, the, in Revelations, there is a vision where the Ark of the Covenant appears. And so, so again and again, God reveals the fact that he he has made a covenant with us that and proving that he is uh, he is the um, overseer of your soul uh, he's overseer of your soul and uh, he is uh, in, in Psalm 125 he, he talks about this that he's there right beside you at your right hand and, you know, God really proclaimed his commitment to you when Jesus Christ laid down his life for you. And if we are in this covenant with him, then we have to react to him by laying down our life for him. And Jesus Christ says, you know, that if you lose your lives for me and for the gospel, he will, he will gain his life because God is great 
and God is, uh, uh, is you know, the Lord of the universe and man is just like a do dust in this universe and, and you are at the mercy of so many things. But if you lay down your life for Jesus Christ, then this, this dust life that you have, you, you, you gain so much, you know, through the Lord, through the King of Kings, through the Holy Spirit, you will enter into a position of power um, and uh, be, just because you are a covenant a partner of God and one thing that you see is that God is right there by your right side at your right hand but at the same time you will see God's authority and let's be clear about the fact that uh, David saw the Messiah you will not let it, uh, your anointed uh, see corruption you know David saw the Messiah himself he didn't know his name he didn't know he would be called Jesus but he did know that there would be a person who would come back from the dead that he would not see corruption that uh, uh, it is a person whom uh, it is written about in verse 11 that he is seated uh, that he would be seated at the right hand of God and he is filled uh, with um, with uh, all pleasant things and David had this kind of vision in his heart God had shown it to him so David had a chance to see the Messiah himself so the vision which you have in your heart uh, is a vision that is directed at the Messiah it shows a picture it gives you a flash about the Messiah uh, you, your heart has a chance to see him this person who overcame death and hell who has come back from from uh, the grave and you know uh, the greatest rebellion that uh, uh, has been has ever been in human history was not this rev this revolution or that revolution but the revolution uh, that Jesus Christ himself uh, came back from the grave so such a heart will see the glorification of Jesus Christ in chapter 11 it says that he uh, He's there at the right hand side of God and the heart is able to intuitively um, uh, perceive how great he is, what power he has, what, how great he is, what promises and what inheritance he gained for us, what it means that we have been put into the position of sons, how he destroyed curses um, so that we would have uh, blessings uh, instead of curses this heart is able to see a victorious future and immediately is able to get out of what is what surrounds him so he sees this this uh, heart sees all this beauty that is uh, around the Lord and you know this anointing this healing anointing will heal your eyes as well so verse 8 um, says that uh, I keep my eyes uh, always on the Lord with him at my right hand you see uh, he will see all these things and the result of that will be that such a person will not be shaken if you have a glimpse if you gain uh, insight to it if you have a glimpse of it you will know that uh, there are more for you than against you that the main authority is for you and not against you and this uh, authority is able to reach you and even if you were to you know fly over the end of the at uh, the other end of the sea God would still go after you and if cover if darkness would ever cover you you will see that it does 
not cover you because the God of light will come and cast away darkness and bring um, bring light to you. And even if people put a trap uh, before your feet and would throw you to Sheol, God even uh, delivers you from there. You know, you see that um, 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 rottenness will not eat you away either, and your soul will not be left in the tomb, in, in the grave, you know, because this uh, period, this era of, uh, of uh, rottenness and uh, passing away will be um, swallowed up by eternal life and you know even until that happens the lord wants to deliver you he wants to heal you god wants to heal sick people even today so that we would not see decay not even in this earthly life so that we'll be able to fulfill you know what we were assigned uh, uh, for this earthly existence if if you repented you are separated for god if you accepted jesus into your life he wrote your name up in uh, the book of life in heaven his blood was shed for you and it separated you from bad um, from evil and that makes you a holy person for god and you should never forget about this truth that he will not let his holy ones to to see decay and i wish that uh, uh, all uh, the smallest uh, parts of decay the smallest power even the smallest power, power of decay would re would leave your body uh, by the power of the holy spirit and may you be filled with the perfect healing of god because he doesn't want his holy ones to see decay and the result of this is that my heart is joyful and my soul rejoices in me and even my body will rest in uh, security so the fact that you see the lord he brings um, joy he he's um, he's indestructible he's immovable and uh, and um, um you see if you see all that uh, then then you you will be happy and you know that you it is you know the connection the point of connection is your heart where does the joy start in your heart and then it overflows into your soul into your mind into your thoughts and into your body as well if your heart is in a good condition all life uh, springs from it so that's why you have to really take care of your heart really watch your heart and as a, as the most valuable treasure in your life if there is life and if there is joy in your heart that will affect your thinking that will affect you know how you judge uh, um, your circumstances how you see yourself and how you see the future uh, that it it won't be uh, it, it, there won't it's not a bad thing that will happen to you but a good thing you know so if if, if you if there are different things in the heart if you have sadness if you have uh, anguish uh, if you have darkness then that will dry out your soul and will cause your body to become uh, 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 ill as well so there are you know there are psychosomatic um, uh, disease illnesses which which have no root in the physical body the, the soul the, the heart and the soul cause the, cause them so um you know the the heart understands that there is an enemy that wants to steal from me that wants to kill me that wants to send me to hell and you know a heart like that cannot be deceived by you know all kinds of joys or you know uh, mis you know deeds uh, um, um, that um, that um, that you know they are unimportant in this life. Uh, they are just um, um, an extra, uh, you know, extra things to to do. But they are not the main thing. You know, when your heart is uh, sees the reality, then it it rises up uh, into the light of God. 
into the vision of God and from there, from up in the place that God gave you, you, you are able to see uh, all the good things that could happen to you, your healing and, and uh, all the rest of it. The key, therefore, is our heart. This is a contact point that we have with God, our hearts. Uh, the previous speaker talked about the fact that uh, God is looking for worshippers who worship him in spirit and in truth. If you want to have communion with him, you must be a, a spiritual person. It's very, you know, it's very easy in this life as well. If uh, you want, if somebody speaks English and you want to communicate with him, you need to speak English to him, otherwise you're not going to understand each other. So, um, if you, if, you know, Jesus Christ, even though he put on a human form, a physical body, his essence is that he is spirit. So, if you want to be in communion with him, you need to be in the spirit. Your spirit must be alive and you are, you will be able to communicate with him from the spirit. Um, you know, as I, as I said, the source of life is uh, is the heart of man. It's the the uh, comparison may not be the best, but let's uh, let's uh, just uh, take the heart and and say it is a it is a battery. You have to put it. Uh, uh, you have to plug it in, you have to uh, charge it for it to to work, for, for it to perform uh, what it was created for. So your heart is something that needs to be charged. And, you know, um, man was created to God's likeness and image. And, you know, the source of our lives are outside of us. Uh, and our spirits don't give us life only if they are uh, plugged in and um, um you know that the 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 electricity that we we have to be in contact with is the holy spirit the father uh, and jesus the son so there is a heavenly uh, uh, network of electricity let's say that and we must be plugged into that because you know david says that my heart says instead of me uh, seek my face in Psalm uh, 27, he says this, uh, if your heart is in a good uh, condition, then it would energize you and, and, and um, push you towards God and receives um, munition from God and this, there will be a dialogue between you and God. So, you know, this charging and the c communion and the connection is very important. It has always been very important, but especially in these times, you know, in the cold, you know, batteries uh, run down. In this cold, freezing world, you know, your heart can freeze and and run down very quickly. So it is very important to... to um, uh, look after your relationship with God to take back your heart into his presence so it's not some uh, um, common way that God just looks at God but like occasionally he he looks at him constantly he keeps his eyes always on the Lord as he says in verse 8 so it's a continual uh, paying attention to the Lord so you know God uh, David's request to God was that he would be able to 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 look at the greatness and the glory of of God? He was really thirsty after after all this. David David really wanted his heart to be in the presence of God. So this is something very important not to let our hearts drift away from God. You have to use this opportunity. You can't go anywhere after eight o'clock. Use this time uh, to renew, to restore your first love for God, to to get uh, fired up with God, with the Spirit of God, and to rise up uh, onto the heavenly waves, you know, and tune in to heaven and stay there. I made a note uh, about uh, the fact that that. 
that um, the so-called crisis faith is really not enough. You know, crisis faith is something that you have a biological optimism and you live your life and so on. But when crisis hits, then suddenly you want to change into faith mode. Well, that's a very risky business because it's like, you know, if you if you uh, have a virus uh, hitting uh, a person with a very weak immune system, it's much more uh, dangerous than when it hits a person with a strong immune system. You know, today we, we live in a world um, that which is freezing outside, which uh, is full of viruses. I, I don't only talk about, you know, biological viruses, but, but uh, of lawlessness and of sin, you know, it's not by coincidence that the devil chose the rainbow as his emblem from this sodomic movement uh, to, to really trample upon the holiness of God. But God is going to restore his order just as he did in Sodom. But we should uh, uh, pray for uh, the, the less victims, um, uh, the least number of victims that there could be, Lord, you know, because uh, the Lord will come back with, uh, with his crowns on his head, uh, with judgment, and before that it would be good that many people would come to their senses, senses and turn to him. So it is very important to strengthen our hearts uh, uh, before the Lord. So the, this last section of my encouragement, I would like to draw your attention. Um, uh, just like the person speaking before me uh, spoke about the spirit-centeredness of David. Uh, so I would like to draw your attention to the fact that there are uh, very uh, there is a very big difference between Christians who are Christ-centered. Uh, they can get to in tune with heaven. Uh, and between those who are, you know, who live their lives on a psychological, uh, uh, sensual level, and in their everyday lives, they don't put an emphasis on uh, looking after their their uh, their spirits, they don't sharpen the the hearing and 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 understanding uh, skills of their spirits. So, Elisha is a great um, example for that. In 2 Kings chapter 6, I would like to read you um, a passage, uh, verse 15, to be precise. Well, Elisha and his, um, um, and his servant was surrounded um, by the enemy, verse 14 says that the, the city where they were was surrounded and um, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the next, mo the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Well, this was a you know, a sensual man just living a natural psychological life. And when the crisis came, he wasn't, uh, he didn't manifest as a man of hope. He manifested as a veiling man. Um, um, and Elisha said to him, uh, you know, he was different uh, from his uh, servant. Um, uh, the great difference was, difference was that Elisha saw the unseen. Um, don't be afraid, Elisha said. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw so the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. You know, Elisha was a covenant uh, partner of God. 
and he could uh, keep his calm in this crisis. Uh, and you see, he prayed for his brother, and the Lord opened his eyes as well. And even though it's not written down there, but I think oh, uh, that the servant saw from the from the moment that the servant saw that there were more for them than against them, then he was afraid no more. So you know, all these. I would like to just tell you that not even sorting out things in the uh, in the church or ministry itself is not a guarantee that you can you can be in a good condition if you don't uh, uh, take time to if you don't take time to look after your relationship with God your spiritual state then you can freeze your heart can freeze and you know not be on top so you know relationships and and ministries are not enough you can see it's very important that the the uh, skills of your heart to see to understand to discern are very important you know the parable of the ten virgins are very uh, um, very important as well it calls attention to something that there are two groups what is the difference between the two groups you know the 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 uh, unwise um, the unwise virgins had everything and the wise virgins also also had everything they lived a sim sinless life they had uh, you know they had the lamb but they you know the unwise ones the foolish ones didn't have oil they didn't uh, understood the voice of the holy spirit didn't hear his voice because their spirit is uh, 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 was blurred uh, and was unable to communicate with the Holy Spirit. So you do have to take back your heart to God. And as darkness grows in the world and as crises are hitting harder, we should have an oily um, uh, heart, if, uh, if I may say that, with, you know, our eyes should be anointed with the healing oil, our heart should be taken back to the presence of God and the whales uh, should be taken off your heart. For example, sin. First of all, if you have sin, there is no vision in the heart. Just like, just like it happened for David, and and he asked God to um, clean his heart and give him him back his uh, his senses. And even worldly, worldly uh, thinking can distort your your thing your thinking and blur um, uh, you know create a blurry picture in your heart so what Paul says in the letter to the Romans is that we should uh, put our hearts uh, put our our bodies uh, into the hand of God as sacrifices and renew our thinking about what the perfect will of God is so um, Apart from taking, wanting to take our heart to God, we should, uh, you know, uh, get the uh, prerequisites right and the conditions right, and we should really keep our our channels clean. We should keep away from sin, and we should uh, uh, change our thinking as well. And we should stand against all the lies and lawlessness and sin that is so prevalent in the world. So. So, dear listeners, you know, because all those uh, want to blind your eyes, you blind your heart. So they don't come uh, uh, by saying, well, I want to ruin you now. Uh, they want to come uh, in, in white clothes, uh, project themselves as, as uh, champions of progression, champions of a new age, uh, you know, and this way, um, this way, um, 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 pretending to be champions of truth and champions of light. Uh, the, the devil likes to do that, and uh, also his, uh, his servants like to do that as well, so that uh, uh, we will not fall into the traps of deception. So, the, so what I read uh, about Elisha, uh, means that as as long as there are people committed 
to the church, to the vision of God. Um, just as uh, the uh, the servant here uh, also gained a vision, the servant wasn't there in the church anymore, uh, just in a physical way, but he was there uh, uh, in, a in a different condition. Such Christians can defend the nation, can build the church, and as you see, Elisha's um, um, Elisha's uh, um, example uh, that uh, Elisha always had told the uh, um, uh, the king of Israel where the Syrians wanted to you know break into the country so in the last days it's very important that the seeing hearing and discerning uh, skills of uh, of our leaders and, and us as Christians would work because it gives us a, a defense against the Syrians whether it whether they come in the form of uh, international machinations manipulations or any form of lawlessness. Uh, such believers who have a living heart uh, are unshakable. In them, in general, there is uh, joy in them. And uh, later on, they can get back to joy because they have the connection between the heavenly network and their hearts, and it conveys joy, it conveys boldness, it conveys faith and hope as well. And such believers, in even under the widest circumstances, can uh, keep calm because they can see and they know that uh, there are more who are with us than those who are against us and it's not anyone who is with us it's God himself the Lord of hosts who commanded uh, to his angels concerning you to keep you to uh, to keep you in their hands so that you will not uh, crush your feet against the stone so the guardian angels are uh, with they, with you uh, that he appointed to you and you can say if God is with me then who can be against me so I wish you uh, my dear listeners that your heart be strong uh, because uh, there are more who are with you than those who are against you it's God himself Emmanuel uh, who stood beside us in Jesus Christ putting on our human form he put on our uh, own uh, clothes uh, so that at a, at a, as a captain he would lead us to triumph and he would lead us through this uh, freezing word and he would keep us uh, during the waves and we would reach him we would stand before him because it's him himself uh, who said that we will come from strength to strength until we appear before the Lord on Mount Zion this is what we are elected to this is what God wants and this is the good news even today may the Lord bless you and keep you may he shine his face upon you and may, may he has mercy on you may he uh, turn his face towards you and give you peace and protection and triumph and success in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Goodbye.